Well, good evening. So, if you look at this, you'll notice that I have a really nice piece of equipment here. It's the, it is the Daytex Omega 3900P pulse oximeter. I like this so much better than my uh, Massimo Radical 8 pulse oximeter. The reason being, it was based on you know, the, the readings, you know, all of the parameters and stuff. They were displayed in LEDs. You get better quality with LCDs. <laughs> so, uh, I wanted to get this because not only, um, that's one thing I don't like about the Massimo Radical 8, but <clears throat> another thing is the Massimo Radical 8, uh, their probes aren't the best. I like these because, you know, they have the posy wraps instead of just the adhesive. Because my medical equipment, my medical equipment company wasn't giving me enough of the uh, wraps and mine or of uh, the adhesive probes so they would go bad rather quickly especially since i'm so mobile so you're looking at we're looking at this uh this is my oxygen saturation and heart rate the top is my oxygen saturation the bottom is my heart rate this PIR is a perfusion index. I don't have good perfusion in my extremities, so it is very low. But surprisingly, it's reading um, it's reading well. The other oximeter didn't read that well. The Massimo Radical 8 didn't read as well as this. Move blood pressure hose. Let me see if I can move this over a little bit. Here we go. These are the alarm limits. I have the high oxygen saturation alarm limit turned off, I mean, it turned off, and the low set oxygen saturation alarm set to 93. I have the high heart rate alarm set to 185, and the low heart rate alarm set to 50. Hmm. And to adjust these, I use these buttons. See, I set the high alarm limit for the SpO2, the oxygen saturation, to 100, <clears throat> and that's why it's alarming. So you can see the alarm silence button flashing, blinking, and uh, the number for the oxygen saturation blinking. This is also, the upper alarm limit is also blinking. Now, we don't want it to alarm if it's at 100, so I'm going to turn it off. This is the low ox oxygen saturation alarm. This is the high heart, I mean the high and low heart rate alarm. If I set the um, uh, low heart rate alarm to 140, notice that it's a lower priority alarm, a medium priority alarm, but it is, it's flashing in yellow instead of red, whereas it would be flashing in red if it was a high priority alarm. And uh, it just gives you three beeps every few seconds. Now... For me, we don't want it to be um, alarming if my heart rate's below 140. Now, if it was below 40, yeah, that'd be a different story. But we'll set this back to, let's say, 60. Now, <laughs> this right here is the contrast, to adjust the contrast. If I slide it left, like this, then the screen gets darker. If I slide it right, then the screen gets bright. But then you can't see it. I'm gonna set it like this. <laughs> now, this is how I adjust the alarm bot. Wait a minute, I hit the wrong button. This is how you adjust the alarm volume. We always set it at high, and this is how you adjust the pulse volume, whereas uh, what that's where it beats to your pulse. <laughs> so, I'm like, it goes up to five settings.
So, and it changes pitch according to my oxygen saturation. So it's beeping to my pulse, and it's change, it'll change pitch according to my oxygen saturation. I'm going to turn that down to... We'll turn it down to one. I mean, yeah. Let's put it on two. <laughs> now, this right here is the on and off button. This is where the cable connects, the sensor, and this is the alarm silence button. See, I just pressed that. Now, somewhere along here, there should be a bell icon to show you that the alarm is silenced. I'm trying to find that. Where it is. My vision's bad, so I'm gonna be slow. No. But anyhow, what that does is it silences the alarm for, I believe, 120 seconds. I couldn't see where the bell is. But it seems like there was like a bell that indicates when the alarm is silenced. This pulse oximeter is in some ways similar to the, Daytec, the GE Daytex Omega TrueSat 3500 pulse oximeter. Now that's a good pulse oximeter, I tell you. I've been on that before. I've seen them before. They are good oximeters. See, since it's silence, huh, I guess the silence period already uh, expired. Let me try that again. Huh, let me try now. <laughs> there we go. So there's an active alarm. Now, uh, let me try to find it here. I still don't, I still can't find the uh, bell icon. But it seems like somewhere around there, there, there was a bell icon that uh, displayed when the alarm was silenced. But if you notice that there's a, the red, the alarm um, LED is red and it's steady. It's not blinking red. It's steady. That means that the alarm is silent. So that way, you know, like if the patient was desatting because you were suctioning them, you could silence that alarm because, you know, you already knew that uh, you've caused that alarm because you're suctioning them. Now, we'll let that period expire because I want to talk to you about these two bottom buttons. This first, right here, is how you get to the menu. <laughs> this left button is the waveform or the home display. The right button, right here, is the uh, <laughs> button to get to the settings. To adjust the, uh, you can hook this up to a modem. You can set labels, like you could label events. <laughs> Let me see I have it, if I have any labels set. But like you can label events and stuff. So that way you'll see them when you're reviewing the trend data. But let's go back. There is a setting. Uh, there's a button for the settings. I'm going to silence that again. Because <laughs> I'll just sound. Uh, we'll fix that in a minute. But there's a button so you can adjust the... Uh, let me see here. You can set the uh, save limit, so that way if you save a limit, like if you're adjusting your alarm limits, uh, if, it's, if you set that to no, the save limits, it will, when you turn off the machine, it will actually revert to the default limits. But if you have that set to yes, as in my case, if I adjust the alarm settings, 
um, and I turn off the machine, when I turn it back on, the alarm settings will be what I, uh, the, at the settings at which I had set them. You have uh, VOD and analog, which is stuff that uh, I don't use because I don't have this connected to a <laughs> data recorder. If I did, you'd use those settings. This machine also has a printer, but I don't use that because I don't have the printer paper. But on top, these settings of how you want to adjust the printer. Yeah. But they are defective. <laughs> so. So you have safe settings. And, uh, all mute. The all mute button is, let's say, that I wanted to silence the alarms indefinitely. Uh, like if I were, if I had this hooked up in a polysomnogram, uh, lab, like a sleep lab, you know, I didn't want the machine to alarm. I could actually set it to, um, to where it wouldn't alarm no matter how many times the patient, uh, desaturated or his heart rate went below or above normal or, you know, I'll show you. To set the all mute, you press this button uh, very quickly, three times. I think it did it. Let me see. And uh, I believe, let me see. You see that flashing bell? That means that the alarms are silenced indefinitely. So the patient can desaturate, but it won't alarm. And you usually wouldn't use this unless maybe you were in the sleep lab or something. But for my case, we don't use that. So. We've turned it off. Now, these buttons right here... These are how you look at the patient, the 24 hour history of the oxygen saturation in the perfusion index. So, if I set the, if I press the, uh, SPO2, um, button, that side, then you will see the trend of the oxygen saturation. So you can get a trend of, you know, with the patients, you can set it, you know, where you can go back and forth. Let me see here. Yeah. Because yeah, that's where you can go back and forth. You can look at the patient's oxygen saturation history. But uh, I have trouble with my vision, so I have a harder time. I have to get up real close, so. But if you look at this. <coughs> you'll notice that it scrolls back in time. But we're going to go back to the waveform display and here we are <laughs> and uh, there is a basic overview of the Daytexometer 3900p pulse oximeter I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and let you see the self test like you know what it because when you power it on it does the self test to make sure the unit is working okay I'm going to go ahead and turn the machine off we're going to leave the probe on my toe and we're going to let you see what it looks like when um uh, performing the, when I turn it on, power it on. Let's turn it off. Now it's off. <laughs> Notice that the green power LED is still lit because I have the machine plugged in. That just indicates that it's charging. But there is no monitoring that is taking place. I'm going to press this button. 
and you'll see the self-test. See, it goes through the LED numerics, make sure they're working okay. And then it'll actually begin to read the, the oxygen saturation. So, yeah. Yeah. I meant to turn this up. But uh, now you have seen a basic overview of the GE, I mean the Daytex Omega 3900P pulse oximeter. What do I think about this oximeter? It's good. It's a lot better than the Massimo Radical 8. <laughs> um, is it my favorite oximeter? No. My favorite, my most favorite oximeter would probably have to be the, either the Nailcore N-395 pulse oximeter, or the GE Daytex Omega True Set 3500 pulse oximeter. That's a really good oximeter. See, it's the, it takes a while to get a good reading with this thing, even. But yeah, thank you for watching the video. You have a great day. May God bless you and keep you. And remember, only he can love you perfectly.